Hey guys, Badabing here, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be looking at one of the most realistic airsoft guns on the planet. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the GBLS GDR15 Dynamic Action System. GBLS is a manufacturer based in the Republic of Korea, and over the past few years they've been very busy building an airsoft rifle you have never experienced before. Sure, you can look at this and many other videos to see another boring M4 that marks the 50 millionth in existence, but what sets this apart from the scores of other similar weapon systems is what's contained within. To give you a basic rundown of what this actually is, is it's an electric blowback single action spring rifle. Crazy, right? Let me explain. When you insert a loaded magazine and pulling back the charging handle, you prime the internal spring housed within a full-sized bolt carrier, and that spring is poised ready to be released upon squeezing the trigger. Once you fire the shot, it acts like a bolt-action spring rifle, and releases the spring that propels the BB. What's cool about this system is once it's done this, the battery operates the motor and gearbox, much like every other AEG, but instead of pulling back a traditional piston, it reciprocates the entire bolt carrier. It acts exactly the same as a gas blowback rifle at this point, where it recoils. As it completes the cycle, it recocks the spring inside the bolt carrier, making it ready for the next shot. I've been playing airsoft since 1998, and this really is like nothing I've ever seen before. In all this time we've seen some minute advancements here and there, but nothing that you could seriously describe as groundbreaking. Since its inception, GBLS have perfected their design, incorporating feedback from end users. Currently, their dynamic action system has been available for such a short time, with many units being in the hands of testers, reviewers, and gents whom prefer the finer things in life. GBLS have done well to expand their presence across the airsoft world, setting up distributors in the US, Europe and here in the UK. I was contacted recently by the UK office and asked if I would be interested in testing one. Hell yes! Thanks to GBLS UK for giving me this opportunity, so with the intro out of the way, let's do this. The GDR15 arrives in this small box, which has a chunky foam padding to secure the rifle, and as you can tell by the dimensions of this box, the GDR comes disassembled, with individually wrapped upper and lower receivers. What you get with the rifle is a very detailed and understandable full colour manual that's rammed with loads of photos and illustrations. In addition, you're given a hop-up Allen key tool and a helpful speed loader adapter for the magazine. The magazine capacity is 60 BBs, it's lightweight and in the style of the classic steel Stanag design. The feed lips resemble those found on a gas blowback mag, also featuring a similar bolt lock tab at the rear. It's a nice thick piece of plastic which is solid in construction. My first impression of the rifle as I was putting it together was of its excellent construction. It's rigid, and unlike most field strippable rifles, the receiver pins glide into place effortlessly, no break-in period or requiring tapping out. The word I'd use to describe the feel would simply be quality. The receiver fit is precise, it's excellently crafted and both halves align without fault. There aren't any noticeable machining marks or errors to be found while running my eyes across the body. It's on the verge of being flawless. I'm sure the Cerakote Armour Black treatment has a lot to do with the pleasing sensation you get when you're looking at it. The GDR15 features a PTS licensed Century Arms CMRL system, which is roughly 8.5 meters long. It also features four QD sling attachment points, two forward and two rear. As we're focusing on the front end, let me draw your attention to the flash hider, which took me completely by surprise during the original unboxing. What the hell is that? I've never seen one of these things before. Of course it's no big deal, there are tons of aftermarket options to replace the ghastly orange plastic birdcage. Here in the UK, it's not something we generally see. The stock is another PTS goodie. The enhanced polymer stock, or EPS, is fairly slimline in design, however the battery space compartment is roomy more than enough to fit your 11 volt LiPo batteries that are recommended for this rifle. If you're used to the LMT stop on stocks, then you'll be familiar with this. The cheek weld is basically identical. The rubberized stock plate is mildly checkered and comfortable to pull into your shoulder. 
Following suit with the stock, they've included a PTS Syndicate EPG, or Enhanced Polymer Grip, which has the same rubberized texture as the buttstock plate. I like it. It feels comfortable, and probably something I'd keep if this were my rifle. Other features present on this rifle remain the same, just as you'd come to find on a basic M4. Bolt catch, dust cover, magazine release, and selector are steel. Each of these components are well made. The selector switch clicks onto the fire mode as well. Every mode has a positive lock with no middle ground. The magazines drop freely from the rifle, and in reverse, they slide into the magwell, smoothly pushing the catch over the hump into a sound lock. Using the included speed loading adapter makes filling BBs an easy process. Likewise, the adapter for filling GHK gas mags works just as well. The charging handle is the basic type we've all seen before. It's nothing fancy and serves its purpose. Breaking the rifle down to inspect the internals and you'll find steel everywhere, which is no surprise given the stresses and recoil forces that will be going on beneath the surface. But there are a number of small components, latches and the like which do look flimsy, so don't expect it'll be totally immune to breakages. I'm glad GBLS have local dealers that can look after you should anything go wrong. The bolt carrier looks to be well crafted as well as the nozzle. The owners group on Facebook has some users that have worn or broken the nozzle tips. Improvements appear to have been made resulting in increased durability. Only time will tell. Best use quality BBs to avoid it chomping on shrapnel. The GDR is compatible with AEG type inner barrels and hop up buckings. The adjustment can be found just below the opening of the chamber and can be calibrated using the Allen key provided. Screwing in will decrease and unscrewing will increase. It can actually overhop on 0.3 BBs, so using anything heavier will not be a problem. Charging the rifle is something you will have to get used to because you'll immediately notice it's extremely stiff. Coming from a background using GBBRs, this felt so foreign to me. You're effectively pulling back a heavy spring similar to a bolt action sniper rifle. Once you've primed the internal spring, subsequent charges have a softer draw as that spring is already charged and ready to go with the pull of the trigger. All the following operations are identical to the manual of arms you'll find on a GBBR and most importantly, the real AR. GBLS also sent me a couple of batteries with this unit which are fitted with Dean's plugs. Time to see what all the fuss is about and shoot it. Yep, it's a different experience to shooting regular AEGs, alright. Even recoil AEGs. It's not quite a gas blowback rifle either due to the electrical gearbox acoustics. The nature of its operation when it releases the shot first before spinning up the gears is the difference between this and regular electric guns. Similar in some respects to the old Tokyo Marui PSG-1 and KSC HK-33s that's use an electric air cocking system. Because it fires the way it does, the shots are instant, crisp and sharp. With my sample, the trigger has a crazy heavy pull, a highly discussed topic when it comes to these rifles. According to GBLS UK, mine happens to be one from their last order that have a heavier pull, with some of them having much lighter operations. It seems like they are fine tuning elements of their rifles and improving as they go, so in the future you could expect a standardised weight of 3 to 5 pounds. It'll take some getting used to, and may lighten up with regular wear. Rapid semi-auto shots can be achieved, but you'd have to put the effort in if you wanted to run fast. It's not going to come easy. The Recoil. It is perhaps the heaviest out of all the electric guns on the market today. 
At the moment, they just cannot compete with this system because of the physical 178 gram bolt carrier weight catapulting back. A recoil found on a gas M4 has more of a harder thud than this, but regardless, it still has a decent wallop for something that's powered by a battery, and it's clearly a more defining feedback than other so-called electric blowback guns I've used. The sound is loud and metallic. It has a resonance that separates it from the typical whining sewing machines that dominate the airsoft world. Hearing the action on Philly Auto reminds me of a milling machine, something industrial. The flow of each shot is consistent and has order versus a gas rifle which can sometimes be overcome with cooldown that leads to a gradual increase in sluggish tempo, summing up that experience to a rattle rather than a screechy whine. Accuracy is rather good out of the box. While adjusting the hop-up is one of the most annoying things about this rifle, the trade-off is in its stability, which it does very well. Using two fives at 20 meters, the groupings are satisfactory, but I'd really recommend using something with a little more weight to compress the groupings. I put some RWA Airsoft Surgeon 3s through it, but the results were fairly similar to the two fives. Regardless, it is a noble effort, and if this were my rifle, I'd be content with this out-of-the-box accuracy. I was very pleased with the extended range that this rifle was capable of. Using the same RWA-3s, my shots were flying well out to 70 meters. The crosswind was a nightmare, and I really could have benefited from some heavier sniper-grade ammunition. The rifle landed a couple of hits on the mannequin too, so it can take it to that level, but it's going to need a higher grain BB to get you there for a higher hit ratio. So, what's more for there to say? This is the future. There actually have been a couple of other products that have a similar operating system. One being the American Airsoft Factory Electric Blowback M4 and the Top Japan Shell Ejecting M4. The American Airsoft Factory M4 have their share of issues at the moment, so I hear, and the Top M4 hasn't really taken off due to it being impractical with its shells, and their caseless version appears to have been forgotten. GBLS seems to be the more popular choice. It has the manufacturer presence across the world, as opposed to a quiet shutaway organization, operating out of a secretive little workshop in a faraway land. Real Sword promised a concept not unlike this one, with gas blowback rifle like qualities, but nothing ever materialized. The GBLS GDR15, it has exceptional build quality, the Seracote finish is decent, the controls are solid and tactile. Magazines are nice and lightweight, the hop-up is stable, accuracy is acceptable, range is impressive, it sounds great. Their dynamic action system is a thing of beauty, recoil and realism is in a class of its own. Likewise, the rate of fire is realistic, it can be used as a single-shot rifle without the battery, it uses a plentiful industry-standard AEG spec inner barrels and buckings. It also has the ability to accept AEG rail handguards, it comes with 12-month warranty, and it has the advantage of localised dealers and service centres. So, what's the bad news? Immediately, I've got to address the trigger weight. I know this is something that may not be relevant in later batches, but as my sample is the basis I have to go by, I can see it being awkward for some people to use. The trigger weight may be too much for female players, for example. The internals look complex, are exclusive to the GBLS system, and obviously spares are not going to be available at every good retailer. The hop-up calibration is awkward to get to, and extremely long-winded to make your adjustments. It has little or no aftermarket support at this time, with the exception of the AEG compatible parts. And on a couple of personal opinions, the trademarks are not my cup of coffee, and I'm not a fan of this civilian-esque build, specifically the long handguard. Finally, I address the elephant in the room, the fundamental negative, the cost. It is one of the most expensive airsoft guns out there, 
at £1,600. I totally get why. Building a product from scratch, R&D, warranty, establishing oneself across the globe is very expensive. This and many other factors I've probably forgot to include translates to an expensive product. It's just how it is. So it's pretty much one of those items that will be reserved for the very serious individuals, or the result of a slowly built up gun fund. I asked GBLS UK if cheaper challenge kits would be available, and while they noted it would be an interesting concept, it's not something that's currently being considered at this time. So here we are. Is it worth it? Well, that kinda depends on you. It is within the highest tier available, and with that comes with an enhanced shooting experience compared to practically everything else out there, but you'll be paying for that privilege. You could have a similar experience by picking up a Tokyo Marui recoil, have it fully upgraded, plus enough magazines for you to be comfortable, for less than what this is costing you. Sure, that's an option. I spent a little time with Marui recoil series, and they are superb performers for the money. They're also aesthetically pleasing to the eye, which is nice. But place a GDR in your hand, and you'll know. You'll know that it's not just the concrete construction and Seracute finish that's giving you the creeping smirk, it's the mass of that bolt carrier group cycling through your shoulder. On the flip side of that coin, you could buy yourself a GHK M4 gas blowback rifle, a system that is widely regarded as the best gas M4 on the planet. Throw in a bunch of magazines and you'd have a lot left over to upgrade, not that it needs it anyway. Even if you take into account the cost of a GBBR plus the running costs, it'll be a while until the accumulation of gas bottles matches the price tag of the GDR. It's just that the GDR will give you the gas playback style handling without having to spend a penny more other than on BBs and a battery. Of course, I cannot speak of alternatives without mentioning the Systema PTW, which I've owned a few in the past. And that's basically where Systema have remained, in the past. With products like this, it's just another nail in the PTW coffin. Or the final nail, what with TM recoils playing a big part in the toppling of a training rifle giant. So throw 12 or 1300 down on the PTW, and you can have the GBLS offering for a few hundred more with its superior realistic functions and manufacturer support. I'd know which of the two I'd prefer. Take into account the pros and cons, and if it's still attractive to you, go for it. It is the best innovation in electric guns for years, and I hope we see more like it in the future. Some people have sold off numerous toys in their collection in order to fund that one special rifle that can do it all has the best of both worlds, giving you the handling of a GBBR without any of the drawbacks. But is this the game-changing masterpiece that'll sway me back over to electrics? Uh, I don't know. I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching the video, my friends. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, show me by hitting the like, and if you haven't done so already, subscribe and then be notified when my next video goes live. Special thanks to GBLS UK for sending me this rifle to review. They've been so helpful throughout our correspondence and allowed me to keep the GDR for a little while longer so I can take it to a Milsim game. I found the FPS was also just a little bit too high to pass the event's limits, so they accepted the bolt carrier back in order to downgrade it for me. Fantastic service. Cheers, guys. For regular updates, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram, facebook.com forward slash badabingpictures, and Instagram, at badabingpictures. I'll see you next time on the GDR15 Part 2 review video. So until then, take care of yourselves. Catch you in a bit.